Commentary channels are one of the lowest barriers to entry niches on YouTube. Competition is high and only a few manage to succeed like Sunny. There's a new commentator in town and his name is Internet Anarchist and he just might be the next Sunny V2. On January 30th, 2022, Internet Anarchist posted his first video about the Joji Iceberg. He broke down eight layers from the Joji spoon shown in the Sanctuary music video to Pink Guy's costume in the Daylight music video, with over a 98% like to dislike ratio. This video was a hit. Normally when people post their first video, it isn't the best quality, but Internet Anarchist is built different. Someone in his comments was feeling like he had another channel he had already succeeded on. It's definitely a possibility. My guess is that he's gone through multiple failed attempts on previous channels or on that one too considering he joined on July 23rd, 2021, just six months before posting his first video. Whatever the case may be, his strategy worked because after six videos, he managed to get to 10,000 subscribers, a feat that only 1.8% of creators get to. On March 25th, Internet Anarchist posted his second video about the Mr. Beast iceberg, but in reality, this was actually his fourth video. His true second and third videos were the Darkest Location Iceberg and the Criminal Who Act TV. Unfortunately, he would go on to unlist them, and my speculation would be because he either didn't like them or they were demonetized. The Criminal Who Act TV was his first attempt to make a video in a different style. No more Minecraft playing in the background, but instead had great stock footage with overlays to give it an eerie vibe. After two more iceberg videos, he called it a quits on that format which would end up being the best thing. On May 14th when I turned 24, Internet Anarchist decided to finally change it up and post the dark rise of Tub, the loneliest YouTuber. This is the video that would change everything. He even got the attention of Tub who ended up complimenting Internet Anarchist on the video and clearing some things up. He posted his next video on May 20th about how Sunny V2 cracked a YouTube algorithm. In a matter of few days, he grew from 800 subscribers to 2,500 subscribers and finally hit 10,000 subscribers. He was officially part of the 1.8% but it didn't last long. Internet Anarchist would continue his Rise content from Wedigoon to Hamza to Penguin Zero. Then, on July 16th, he changed things up a bit and posted how the Tekkit Realm fakes his videos and gets away with it. This was a genius move by him. Normally when creators see something that works, they stick to it. It's always good to do what works, but it can also leave you stagnant. It's safe to assume that Internet Anarchist didn't want to just remain the same. He wanted to improve constantly. This is partly why he stopped his iceberg videos. He realized it didn't work, broke down the reasons why he failed, and shared it on Twitter. He continued testing video ideas and differentiating himself even more. This is why he's so successful and has been able to grow so quickly. Anybody can do a rise and fall video, but it takes more time, it takes more thinking to come up with a more unique angle that will get people wanting to watch. He doesn't just talk about the failure of Arcade Craniacs, he talks about his dark past. He doesn't just talk about the downfall of Ricegum, he talks about his disappearance. He doesn't just talk about the decline of the Tate brothers, he talks about the why. Internet Anarchist realized that the way something is presented can have a huge effect on its video performance. He packages his videos in such a way that they bring even more curiosity and more inclination for people to click on his videos. And best of all, he delivers every single Time. By the end of November, he would hit over 53,000 subscribers and join the 1%. On December 1st, he posted how restoration videos are faked where he talked about the strong and mild fakes, plus calling out obviously fake channels. Four days later, he hit 69,000 subscribers. Internet Anarchist is unstoppable. And on December 19th, posts his last video of the year. Is Unbox Therapy buying views? This could be seen as dangerous territory for a video. He could be met with backlash and accused of slander, but Internet Anarchist is smart. He didn't accuse Lou of anything. His title was phrased as a question, and in the video provides his evidence to back up the potential claim. He goes full internet detective, which reminds me of CoffeeZilla, and dives into Lou's past scams such as a fake iPhone giveaway. He mentions that Lou's reviews just don't seem trustworthy anymore, considering many of his videos are just sponsored. Internet Anarchist further mentioned that Lou would be seen as even more disingenuous when Lou promoted the Pablo Escobar Fold 2, which was an obvious scam. Internet Anarchist reached 90,000 subscribers. Then on December 29th, 99.8 thousand subscribers. Later that day, he finally gets to 100 thousand subscribers. He's officially part of the 0.3%, but this is just the beginning. On the surface, Internet Anarchist and Sunny V2 are documentary video essay commentary channels, and in that sense, they're very similar. Sunny V2 made a video on Penguin Zero, September 6, 2020. Internet Anarchist did the same on July 7, 2022. Sunny V2 made a video on Mr. Beast's brother, April 14, 2022. Internet Anarchist did the same on August 31, 2022. Sunny V2 made a video on Ricegum, December 20, 2020. Internet Anarchist did the same on November 14, 2022. Besides that, there are a lot more differences, starting with their beginning. Before Sunny was Sunny V2, he started off on a different channel, Might of Sun, back in 2015 where he would post old RuneScape content. And after a year, he would disappear from the channel, only to eventually return with Fortnite content. 
On January 22nd, 2019, Sonny went on to create Sonny V2 and went all in on Fortnite videos. Again, he eventually got bored of it, then switched to a self-improvement niche. And then, on March 9th, 2020, he posted Boogie2998, the worst mindset on YouTube. Sonny continued this type of content showing the good, but mostly focusing on the bad and downfall of creators. If you want to know more about Sonny's rise, please go check out Internet Anarchist's How Sonny V2 Cracked a YouTube Algorithm video. Internet Anarchist's beginnings remain unknown and faceless. I was thinking of reaching out to him to see if he'd be able to give some more insight, but I didn't want to bother him more besides our brief DMs where I congratulated him on his move to Thailand and saying he and Sonny V2 are my inspirations for starting this channel. I also told him I was going to make this video and he said, oh wow, I'm flattered. So Internet Anarchist, if you're watching this, hi. When we dive deeper into their content, we start to see major differences. From the beginning, Internet Anarchist did four things that stood out from Sunny V2. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. He really let his audience know who he is, and he did this 22 out of his 27 videos. I can only speculate to why he skipped the five times. Maybe he forgot. Maybe it was a test. Maybe he felt it wasn't appropriate. Either way, his constant introduction, update on his channel growth, and overall gratitude makes for a more personal connection, especially when the channel is faceless. Sunny V2, on the other hand, did things differently. He didn't have any sort of introduction, but it's not like he needed one. He already had a fan base from his Fortnite and self improvement days, so they knew who he was. Sunny V2's first videos included recording his face as he commentates certain parts, but eventually he started doing this less and less. It's like he was conditioning us for his inevitable disappearance and just remain a voice behind a faceless channel. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. People love him. Whenever we see a Sunny V2 video, we'll watch it even if we have no idea who the video is about because we aren't watching it for the topic. We're watching it because Sunny put out a video. The same applies to Internet Anarchist. Back in the early days of YouTube, quantity was everything. Daily vlogs was the norm and it was the only way to grow. But this isn't the case anymore because the algorithm, in other words, the audience, values quality. And that's exactly what Internet Anarchist started with. From the very beginning of his iceberg days, his videos were well made and his viewers noticed. Your content looks a lot like it's from someone with experience. This is great editing. Wow, you have the editing quality of a big channel. He went from having Minecraft videos in the background with great editing to doing a Sunny V2 type video about Sunny V2 even sounding like Sunny V2 in a video about Sunny V2 in the style of Sunny V2 on the same platform as Sunny V2 in the same country as Sunny V2. I love the comment section. And this was only two months in. Fast forward 10 months and you get something like this, which reminds me of the Sunny V2 type editing we know today. Sunny V2 on the other hand didn't get to his current production value as fast. Fast forward a year in and we get something like this. It's a more simplistic style of editing, but it worked for him, and he was still including his face here and there. 2022 was Internet Anarchist's first year on YouTube and he produced 24 public videos, while 2020 was Sunny V2's first year and he produced 46 public videos. We're not including unlisted videos for simplicity's sake. When we break down their first year into quarters, we can start to see more of what went on. January 1st to March 31st, both Internet Anarchist and Sunny V2 had similar amount of videos, but it's also worth noting that Sunny started much later in the year. April 1st to June 30th, we can start to see where they branched off. Internet Anarchist posted 6 videos, doubling his output, whereas Sunny nearly quintupled it at 19 videos. But this wasn't sustainable. During the second half of the year, we can start to see a pattern form showing posting frequency. Internet Anarchist posts roughly 2 times per month, and Sunny V2 at 4 times per month. This pattern for Sunny V2 can be seen even more in 2021 and 2021. 2022, when he posted 54 and 52 videos respectively. When it comes to video duration, there's also a difference. Internet Anarchist started his first quarter with videos averaging 17 minutes and 18 seconds, and by the end of quarter 4, it went to 12 minutes and 19 seconds, which was a decrease in 28.9%. This was the opposite of what Sunny V2 did. Sunny V2 started off his first quarter with videos averaging 11 minutes and 20 seconds, and by the end of quarter 4, it went to 17 minutes and 36 seconds, which was an increase by 55.3%. This begs the question, whose strategy was better? By the end of Internet Anarchist's first year, he reached 101,000 subscribers, while Sunny V2 reached 202,000 subscribers. It's fair to say Sunny V2's strategy was better simply by looking at the subscriber growth, but that doesn't paint the entire picture. How was Sunny's mental health? How was his work-to-life balance? Was he happy? I think it's safe to assume Sunny V2 was feeling stressed to keep up with the demand of high-quality, high-effort video documentary essays that were nearly 20 minutes long every single week. By quarter 4, 2021, Sunny V2 decreased his video duration to 13 minutes and 1 second, and by 2022, quarter 4, decreased it to 11 minutes and 42 seconds. He found his sweet spot, and it only took him 3 years on YouTube, not counting his previous gaming and self-improvement days. It seems that Internet Anarchist found a sweet spot within a year. 
One of the most important things about being a creator is understanding your community and providing value outside of just YouTube videos. Both Sunny V2 and Internet Anarchist use YouTube community posts, but their frequency is quite different. In the past three years, Sunny V2 had 85 community posts, with his last one being two months ago. He mostly posted memes, YouTube facts, self-promotion, polls, and random stuff. In the past 13 months, Internet Anarchist had 262 community posts, with his last one being a few days ago. His posts were more about his old YouTube journey from getting partnered, reaching 10,000 subscribers, updates, and polls. Twitter is where Internet Anarchist really shines. This is where he shares much more, not only about his YouTube journey, but also any tips he learned along the way, from best practices to thumbnail analysis to design approach. And there's just too much on here to cover in one video, but just know if you need any advice on YouTube, just check out his Twitter. Sunny V2 did have a Twitter at some point since he mentioned it in his community posts a few years back, but when you click on it, you get nothing. Internet Anarchist also has a Discord which further brings his community together. As creators, we always look up to those that came before us. We take inspiration and strive to be as big as they are one day, but sometimes people go too far, flat out copy and just become a clone. Internet Anarchist doesn't do this, and he isn't the next Sunny B2. The goal is never to be the next this, the next that, but to be on par with them, or together with them. Look at Arak and Mr. Beast. They're two different creators with similar audiences and different content. Internet Anarchist makes his own videos, tells his own story his way, provides value, and because of that, he's different. He's not Sunny B2, but he for sure will be as big as him one day.